All right, everybody, welcome back. We uh, left off here with our Hello World page. And now we're going to start diving into some code. And uh, we, we set up all of our tools in the previous video. Now we're going to start setting up our project a little bit. So in this index page, let's go ahead and we'll get rid of this Hello World. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now what we need to do first is we need to set up our basic HTML. Um, and I, I want to note right off the bat here that um, what I'm going to do a little different than the previous building a website and building a dynamic website projects, um, we're not totally starting from scratch uh, as far as uh, knowledge goes. We are starting from scratch as far as building the site, but I'm not going to go through and explain in really, really deep detail uh, HTML and CSS. That uh, doesn't mean I'm not teaching anything, <laughs> but uh, if, if you have issues or questions with HTML, check out our HTML series um, and even our first building a website series. Although it's a little out of date, it still has a lot of good material in there. So if you're unfamiliar with uh, these HTML tags and things like that that we're going to start working on, follow along. But if you're, if you're really getting stuck, go back and, and uh, check out the HTML series. And really, likewise, with uh, PHP and MySQL. Uh, I also have a series that goes through a lot of the basics of PHP and MySQL. Although I will talk a little more in depth about that in this series. But as far as the HTML and CSS goes, um, you either you know follow along and, and learn as you go, or I'm expecting you to have at least a little bit of knowledge on that already. And uh, so what we're going to do in this first part, um, which I'm, I'm kind of going to cut this whole series up into chapters, uh, for lack of a better term. And uh, this first chapter, we're really going to focus on the front end. And we'll revisit the front end. We're not going to put a whole lot of uh, work into the front end uh, because we really want to get into that whole dynamic aspect. Uh, and, you know, if you're watching this series, that's probably what you're interested in. Uh, but we, we do need to set it up the front end just a little bit. So without further blabbing, let's go ahead and start doing some HTML. So if uh, you have followed our older videos, we weren't, uh, in a lot of them, we weren't doing HTML5 because HTML5 was not around or extremely brand new and uh, not really widely accepted in browsers yet. So this first part might be a little different. Um, we're gonna, we need to put in the doc type. And in the older versions of HTML, you had to have this really long uh, line of code that, that dictated what version of HTML we're using and what standards to use, whether it's going to be strict or loose or whatever, uh, now you don't need to do that. You strictly need to tell it that it's going to be an HTML document and that's all you really need to do to start using HTML5. So we want to do this doc type tag and we just want to say HTML and that's it. That's all we need to tell it that it's HTML and HTML5. So next what we need to do is our HTML tag. If you're not familiar already, this basically wraps the whole HTML document. So inside there, we need our head tag. This is the head of the document. Now, not to be confused with uh, the header of the page, which is the more visual element. The head, uh, this is where we load things like CSS and JavaScript, as well as metadata and things of that nature. Things that are not necessarily visible on the page. For the things that are going to be visible on the page, we want the body tag. So again, I'm, I'm talking a little bit about the basics of HTML here, but if you're not familiar, everything that you want to show up on the page should be in the body tags. So we'll go ahead and save this, and uh, let's just go ahead and add our hello world again, and we'll just wrap that in a uh, heading tag, an h1 tag. And really this is just so we can see something on the page. So we'll save this and flip back to our browser, refresh the page, and there we go. We have a h1, a heading one, it says hello world. Exciting. But 
but uh, now our page is set up. Now when I said we need to kind of set up our project, that means we need to grab some of the resources that we're going to use that we talked about in the previous videos. Uh, one being Twitter Bootstrap. Uh, we need Twitter Bootstrap, we need jQuery, and we're also going to toss uh, Font Awesome in there as well. So let's flip over to our browser, and if you open up a new tab and go to getbootstrap.com, you should see this page. Now if you search for Bootstrap and um, you don't see this page come up, there's a decent chance you might be looking at the old version of Bootstrap, 2.3.2. Uh, we are not using that, and it is very different. So we want to make sure that we're we're on uh, version three. So let's go over here to getting started, and we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to look at what we need. Uh, here is pretty much the most important part. Uh, these are hosted versions of Bootstrap, basically meaning these are hosted on on a server where we can go ahead and use all the Bootstrap CSS and JavaScript from their server. Now eventually we'll probably go ahead and make a copy of this and, and put it on our server uh, in the event that we want to change it. Um, but right now let's just go ahead and copy this whole thing here. Control C if you want to use the shortcut. And come up here into the head of our document. Give yourself a little, couple of lines here and go ahead and paste that in tab this out to make it look nice. So what we have here is the Bootstrap CSS, which is this right here. This is the main CSS. Then our theme, uh, which will definitely replace this. This is where we're going to do any changes we need to make. Uh, we pretty much want to keep the original Bootstrap intact and then we'll kind of overwrite things here in the uh, theme file. Um, but as it stands right now, we're using a hosted one, which means we can't edit it. But we'll just leave that be for now. And then our JavaScript. Uh, if we want to do things like drop down menus and stuff like that, we're going to need the JavaScript. Now, this actually runs on jQuery, which means we also need to have jQuery running on this uh, page. So let's just go ahead and save this. And we'll flip back to our browser. And let's go back to our page. And we're going to refresh it. And the thing you're going to notice here is not going to be really some huge amazing change but you will notice that the H1 uh, style is going to change a bit. There you go. So this is using the Bootstrap CSS and just for those who may not be familiar CSS is uh, kind of in layman's terms what we use to change the way a page looks. So we change the way the HTML elements look. In this case the H1 tag now has a different font and uh, isn't necessarily bold like a H1 normally is. And Bootstrap already has these styles set up to affect those uh, HTML tags. What Bootstrap also has is a bunch of custom uh, rules uh, using classes so that we can apply other great things. And uh, we'll get into that later. So what we also need is jQuery. So if you want to open up another tab here, and go to jQuery.com. This is a, a good place to bookmark and uh, check out later because it's got great documentation if you want to learn more about jQuery. But we need to go down here and copy this here. This is the, the hosted version of jQuery. Uh, this again, if we wanted to, we could download and, and host it on our own. Uh, but right now, we'll keep it as it is. So just copy that and hop in here and we want to make sure that this is loaded before Bootstrap's JavaScript is loaded. Otherwise, it's not going to know what to do with it because it's written in the jQuery format. So we want to come in here and do script and source. We'll go ahead and paste that in the source. And there you go. So now we have jQuery loaded in there, and let's just go ahead and put a comment in there. So we have that. Um, now another thing we want to have in here is the jQuery UI, which uh, for uh, those who have watched the, the first video and read our comments, um, somebody <laughs> got on me about the uh, terminology I was using. 
So jQuery is a, you know, technically a library, and uh, whereas jQuery UI is a framework. But, uh, you know, same, same, whatever. So we want to get that as well. So if we go to the browser, and you can either go to jQueryUI.com, or if you notice on the jQuery site, if you scroll back up, up here are some tabs where you can go to uh, a lot of the pages uh, associated with jQuery. So if you clicked on this, it would take you to the uh, jQuery UI as well. So just like the jQuery, we can come down here and find the hosted versions of the uh, jQuery UI. So we have the CSS here, which is important. Let's first grab the JavaScript, which we want the second one here. This first one is uh, what we just took, the uh, just the standard jQuery. So we'll go ahead and copy this line here. And now for this, we want this to load after jQuery loads so that it knows what to do with it. So we'll do the script tag and then source and then paste in that. And then we'll put a comment in here. If you're not familiar with the HTML comments, this is the format for it. Comments do not show up on a page. They only show up in the code. So we'll go ahead and save that. And let's hop back over here to this page. And we want to grab this CSS. So I'll copy that. up here with our other CSS. Just do a link tag. Make sure we call it a style sheet. And the href property. Go ahead and paste that. And then close that tag. And do a comment. Let's just run through these really quick to make sure everybody's got everything we need. So we've got the bootstrap file for CSS, the bootstrap theme file, then the jQuery UI CSS, jQuery itself, jQuery UI JavaScript, again needs to be run after jQuery is loaded, and then finally the bootstrap JavaScript, which is uh, also jQuery so that needs to be run after both of these. So go ahead and save that. And lastly, we talked about Font Awesome, which if you go to a new tab and you go to fontawesome.io, you'll get their page. And just like we did with jQuery and Bootstrap, we want to get a link to the file. So right here, we can copy this. And we're using font awesome 4.0.3 in this case. So I'll make sure that's right. And let's just go in here. And after our jQuery CSS, paste that in there. And toss in a comment. And save that. There you go. Now we have all of our tools. And really quick, let's just pop over and take a look at what Font Awesome actually is, in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, I mentioned in the first video, Font Awesome allows us to use a icon bank of vector icons. So rather than having to go into Photoshop or something like that, or, or find images that are icons to use on your site to make it fancy, for instance like this over here, or this up here, we can use Font Awesome's icons, and because they're vector, we can scale them as big or small as we want. Um, now, I'll, I'll say with vector, you won't lose quality. Um, sometimes certain sizes don't render very well in a browser, so um, the quality might look a little what I call crusty. <laughs> but um, ultimately, it's way better than having to use graphics. Uh, raster graphics uh, and they've got just a great bank of icons so if you click over here on icons you'll get to see all their icons so these are all the icons we get to use and to go ahead and test to make sure that we've 
set up Font Awesome correctly. Let's just go ahead and pick one of these icons. And we'll go with the leaf. Uh, this is mainly because a, a student and I were messing with this icon and, and really liked it. Uh, so he, could get, he should get a kick out of that. Um, so we'll go ahead and copy this code here. Just from uh, just the I tag here. And for those who aren't familiar, uh, the I tag used to be for italics. Now we use the emphasis tag or the EM tag. So what Font Awesome has done is kind of attached itself to that tag. So we can use that tag here. We're going to paste this. And all we need to do to use a Font Awesome icon is give it a class of FA for Font Awesome and then the icon name, which in this case is FA-Leaf they're always going to be FA dash something and that's all you need so we'll go ahead and save this and hop over to our browser go back to our page refresh and there we go there's our leaf now it's kinda of hard to see so really quick let's just go in here and if you look at examples you can see how you can make these things larger so all we actually need to do is add another class which is FA dash we'll do the uh, five times. So after leaf we'll do space FA dash five X. Save that. Hop over to our page. Hit refresh and there we go, we got a big old leaf. And let's go ahead and we'll just cut this out and we'll toss it up here in the H1 tag give a space before hello world save Up over there you go so now we're all set up with the tools we're going to use the uh, the only tool that I mentioned in the first video that we haven't put in yet is the uh, Google web fonts and uh, we'll experiment with that later right now I have no idea what font I want to use